Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> All right. Let's just go live first. So it's there. Okay. Yeah. Hope you're all doing well. You enjoyed your Guru Purnima meditation yesterday. Yes, yes that was very really nice. Yeah. Fabulous. It was long. It was long. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, shall we start with an invitation? Please close your eyes, connect them to the palate, inhale and exhale. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, to, the Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Reverend Lord Maha Guruji Mary. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, angels and beings and great teachers of theosophy, to our soul and divine self, to the great angels and beings of communication, our respective IFIs, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your guidance, especially for your knowledge and wisdom. Bless us today with greater clarity and understanding of these priceless teachings being imparted to us today. Help us to be able to put these teachings in perspective, especially with reference to Grand Master Choice teachings. We thank you for accepting us as instruments to do your work, and we hope that these teachings will help us become better instruments with thanks and in full faith. So be it. Gratitude, respect, and love. We thank you. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste, guys. All right. Okay, so I'm going to mute everybody before we start. So before we go ahead, um, did, uh, did you find the teachings that you heard uh, in the last session useful when you heard Master Danny talk? Before I mute everyone. Your voice is cracking. Okay. Really? All right. Yes. Um, could you tell us if, if you had any questions or... Anything from that before? Is that a question? No, there is no question. Okay. I open a wonderful room of this. Okay, fine. All right, glad. Okay, so then now I'll go to muting everybody. Okay, so we're going ahead with chapter 13, Kundalini, and uh, we come to the next paragraph, right, where we're talking about uh, the awakening of this particular energy that we call the Kundalini. And they say that um, the arousing is achieved by, the, by a determined and long continued effort of the will. So they're talking about using a lot of will. And obviously, it's not the solar plexus will. Um, it's the will partially maybe of the agnya and, uh, and maybe the spiritual will. And then it says we have to bring this energy, which is lying there at the base of the center, right? Somewhere near the base of the spine. And we have to awaken this. And uh, when it awakens, there's a tremendous force. And I think Amit mentioned about that force, you know, because it's been down for so long. It just kind of goes... Uh, upwards. Now, when it goes upwards, it's going to go towards all the energy centers that are there on the way, livening it, vivify, vivifying it as it moves along. And uh, they say the effect on the center is to then bring into our physical consciousness uh, the awakening and and the uh, uh, and the development that happens when the same thing happened in the astral body. So all those amazing uh, aspects that we spoke about, clairvoyance and clairaudience and other factors that uh, happen in the astral body and the astral centers, when the Kundalini rises there, will then be conscious in the physical body. Yes, and we're able to sense and feel and use those faculties here. However, it also says that um, in order to bring this result, it is necessary that this energy, yes, uh, the Kundalini energy, the serpent fire, uh, the uh, the snake or the, the dragon moves in a certain way 
starting from the base of the spine. And then they say there is a certain order and there is a certain way, correct? So they talk about an order in a certain way that this moves and they say it does change from person to person. However, the occults are aware of this actual movement and they're very careful not to reveal this out. Yes, because they realize if it is mentioned or it is given out and people misuse it, there's a lot of uh, consequences. And so because of the danger of awakening it, it is not mentioned uh, as to how this has to happen. However, it says um, accidentally, yes, if someone does awaken it uh, prematurely, that can be a problem. And that's the danger that they're talking about. And uh, they move on to say that uh, the warning Yes, uh, against attempting to awaken this Kudalini um, un before it is the right time. Yes, and here they, say, they use the word uh, time is fully ripe. And if it is not done at the right time or under the guidance of a teacher or a master or an experienced occult, uh, it could be a problem for you and me. And this we know because this is something that Master Cho mentions to us on a regular basis. And he says, Awakening the Kundalini is something that you have to be aware. And a lot of people are scared. Even when they come into, say, for example, Master Chos or Hatha Yoga course, they're worried that when you talk about something called Kundalini meditation, they're like, oh my God, should I do it or not? And so the fear does come across in some of the questions they ask us. Um, and for me, luckily, because we're all pranic healers, we realize that Master Cho makes everything safe from pranic healing, including if we do make mistakes, he does give us the ability to look at how to correct those mistakes. Yes. And so there's always a counter for it, whether it's pranic healing, whether it's psychic cell defense, whether it's arhatic yoga, whether it's to enhance meditation, whether it's kundalini meditation. And so, yes, they do mention here that if you do awaken it without proper guidance, yes, especially from a, a, a guru, teacher, a master, um, it can cause a lot of problems. And so most people are not aware of how to do this. And so if you have the time and you want to read about it, there's this book called Kundalini by Gopi Krishna. And uh, he was, I think, a Kashmiri Pandit uh, or a Pandit who tried to awaken the Kundalini directly from the base of the spine upwards. And in that he says, the best thing that could have happened to me is that I died. And uh, he talks about all the things that he goes through in it. And, and uh, it is quite scary, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've read that, uh, if you've read that, then suddenly when you come to a class like this, it can be a little worrisome. But remember, Master Chua is giving you the safest way in which we can awaken the Kundalini. One of the safest ways. And remember, he's practiced it himself. He calls himself the guinea pig of many of the things that he's given us. So uh, for me, I know at least as far as this is concerned, uh, this the technique that he gives us is definitely safe. However, uh, yes. Uh Oh, you want to talk? You're already question? going to the end of the page. No, um, I just did two paragraphs. Yeah, so okay. there's a lot. Um, okay, so he'll talk. All right, so the first paragraph, it says the arousing is achieved by determined and long continued effort of the will. The will is basically the intention. And uh, to awaken the Kundalini, you need a certain amount of will energy. Uh, different schools use different kinds of energy, like the Taoists, they use power or the will. Uh, that's why in the Hindu culture, it's the Shiva energy that awakens the Shakti. Uh, within uh, dormant at uh, you know at least or the Ganesha. Um, so in different cultures, you'll see that the will aspect is the one that is doing the awakening. All right, um, but we won't go into detail of that. Otherwise, we'll be stuck there. Now, what they're trying to say is this: um, precisely the awakening. Once it's aroused, tremendous force to the centers and vivified return. You have to understand that you are being of light, love, and power, right? Those of you who've done or read the book uh, "Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul" will understand that um, the soul is uh, pure energy with consciousness. Okay, it's pure, uh, but it's not perfect, right? And the ingredients of the soul is light, love, and power. So you have uh, intelligence, you have the love, and you have the will. So if you look at your life, if you look at any characteristics of your life, you know that you have willpower, you know that you have, you have the ability to love and you have a certain amount of intelligence also, right? Uh, now, so what is the difference between you and a saint, all right? Um, the difference is the quantity and the quality because both souls are made of light, love and power. So the, but the quantity of light, love and power and the quality of light, love and power differ, 
from you and a saint. For example, you have love, but Mother Teresa might have much more developed, uh, much more quantity and quality of love. All right. So your being of light, love and power, you have to develop that potentiality within you. That is the whole concept of spirituality. That's the whole concept of yoga, of evolution and everything. Okay. Now, in order for you to manifest, now as you evolve, so then you have certain meditations to develop your light, love and power. You have certain um, yogas to develop all of that. But apart from doing all of that, like just continuing what I was saying, um, you need to develop instruments to manifest that light, love and power within you. Okay? So imagine you have this much amount of love. You develop that. You're doing certain meditations, like meditation twin hearts. You're doing inner reflection. You're doing uh, blue triangle techniques that we teach in our Hatha Yoga or certain uh, purifications. And then the love aspect develops within you. But to manifest that love aspect within you, you need to upgrade equipment for that love aspect to manifest physically, emotionally, and aesthetically. Do you understand? Right? So that is why it needs to vivify or awaken these centers, all right, to, to uh, vivify them. All right. Then the effect on the centers is to bring into the physical consciousness the powers which were aroused by the development of the corresponding astral center. So in other words, in a very complicated manner, it's basically telling you that the effect is it helps the body register subtle frequency. That's what we spoke about last session. All right. Now, in order to bring about these results, however, uh, this is basically what Sumi spoke about. Different types of people, it happens in different ways. Um, that depends, according to Alice Bailey in Treaties on Cosmic Fire, and that's at least where I read, uh, it depends on the ray of a person. But if you go into detail of that, again, it's confusing. Um, different people, that, that is common, right? You're in school. You have different kinds of students. Uh, you, have, you have your friends. You have a batch of 25. And different people are good at different kind of things, you know. Some are good in mathematics. Some are good in uh, English. Some are good in sports. Some are not good in sports. But they all graduate from school. <laughs> they all have a certain amount of knowledge. <laughs> For some, they find English very easy. For some, they find drawing really tough, but they find math very easy. But they all graduate. So anyway, looking at that is too complicated and the end result is what we we're more interested in okay um now uh, occultists who have understood these matters from the first hand knowledge are always exceedingly careful to give no clue to the order uh in which um it has to be passed through these centers so there's a hint that this technique is secret all right the technique is secret and um it says the most solemn warning are uttered against attempting anything until the time is fully ripe. But they're not specifying yet. Let's see, as we move along, what do you mean by the time is fully ripe? What do you mean? How do you, I mean, how do you become ripe? <laughs> In other words, all right? So that's why some of the, sometimes the books are very like teasers, you know? They're like, oh, you have to wait till the time is ripe. And then you're waiting. What do you mean by ripe? No answer. Then you have to wait for a teacher like Master Chua to come along and tell you, okay, this is what. So if you look at the Achieving Oneness, the Higher Soul book, there is a section on preparation. I think it's called preparation to awaken Kundalini. Step one, physical exercises. Step two, breathing exercises. Step three, uh, purification. This, 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 this. You do that, then you can awaken your Kundalini. It's given one, two, three, four, five. So if you want to know, you can read it there. All right. Um, the most solemn warning are uttered against attempting anything of the kind until the time uh, is fully ripe, unless under the guidance of a master. Yes, because uh we're all different and uh when you awaken the kundalini there we, we we're not coming in with a blank slate there's a lot of baggage within us uh and the kundalini like i said is activating in nature it activates everything it's like fertilizer um so basically uh you need a teacher to guide you through the proper way and especially you know someone who's already been through that so they'll understand uh, audio and video scrap so um Someone who's been through that and they'll be able to guide you and trying to tell you, um, look, don't go through here. I've been there. It's not so good. Go through here. Don't go through here. You go through here. So I noticed one time, Master Chua suddenly aged very rapidly. Do you remember that? Uh, anyway, he aged. If you look at him at 40 something, he doesn't look 40 something. He looks like, I, I don't know, close to 55, 60 plus maybe. Um, and then one time we were playing around with the Kundalini, not, not ours, but in you know, the meditation. And one of the people asked, 
uh, master, when you're guiding it, I won't reveal the technique because that's for Arhatic yogis, but for the Arhatic yogis, the meditation and the breath, uh, someone was talking about uh, synchronizing uh, the breathing with the, you know, going in and going out because you do that with transmutation of sex energy, you do that so to help the energy move. Straight away, Master is like, don't do that, don't do that. If you, if you do that, your, your body will age very rapidly. <laughs> okay. uh, I can't reveal the rest, but you know, how did he know that? Uh, because of connection. Oh, really? No, they're saying cracking in the video is not clear. Oh, really? So, I can't repeat because I don't remember what I said. Okay, it's okay. Just okay. What happened? Can you check which? Yeah, so check. You just get off uh, full screen. Is it on full screen? No. Then how come it's not showing? No, we're trying to see if it's the Wi Fi that's causing this. the problem. Uh, no, it's fine. Okay. The Wi Fi seems to be okay. I know you were just doing the streaming also, right? That was fine. Anyway, so. Can you tell me if you can video freezed? Cannot hear correctly. Uh, maybe I'm being incorrect. <laughs> or maybe you're not supposed to hear what I just said <laughs> about the aging. Right, but that is basically why. Um, really? Okay, we can hear you. All right. So. Uh, All right. Anyway, so that's the reason why you need a teacher. Because if we had played around there, suddenly Amit would be. <laughs> Where your body would be very old. From a medical viewpoint, that is very interesting. If you could rapidly age yourself, could you rapidly, you know, do the reverse? <laughs> Should have asked it then. We were too shocked, so didn't figure that out. It's okay. already there. Deepa's put it up. Yeah. So those of you asking about It'll come the reversed. book, yeah, I know it's coming reverse, but that's the book. Uh, it, the book looks very different now from the one I had. One I read. But anyway, this is basically the book. Master would recommend it so that we'd uh, appreciate <laughs> how easy it is, um, how easy the techniques we learned is, um, has been. My God, we haven't started sharing the screen yet. So you can go on Zoom. Listen. Zoom, you can go ahead. All right. Now I'm trying to see if we can help you. Uh, even though it's frozen, you can hear me. All right. Oh, don't worry, it's the same face. You've been seeing it for too many days, so don't worry about that. Just as long as you can hear us. All right, so uh, going ahead. So they mention here very clearly in the next paragraph that before you want to awaken the Kundalini, yes, that it is, uh, it is very important to look at the stage of moral purity. Yes, uh, and so they say, um, before Kundalini is aroused, it is absolutely essential that a definite stage of moral purity be reached and also that the will, so there is purity, Okay, there is a problem. Let's keep saying it's unstable. Mm, okay. The boy using the term, so so uh, it talks about both purity and will, strong will, yes, uh, that is enough to control the force. So remember the kundalini that is moving. You should, be ha you should be able to have enough will to intend for it to move in the right direction. And at the same time, purity. And so uh, whether you've done achieving oneness or whether you've done arhatic yoga, in our school, purification is very, very important not just doing the meditation on kundalini because the kundalini is very important <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we are muted. So, can you hear us now? Can you hear? Yes, can you see? I'm looking at the chats to see if there's any difference. Yes, yes. Okay, hopefully, this is good. So, let's continue. So, when we're looking at awakening the Kundalini, uh, one of the things that is mentioned in the next paragraph, while you want to arouse, or let's use the word, awaken the Kundalini, there, there are two things to look at. One is purity, yes, or purification, as we call it in Master Cho's class uh, or school. And the second is with reference to your will. The will that is able to handle this force as it kind of moves up. 
Yes, so you need both these are very, very crucial. Now, the purification, he says, um, if your body has not been purified effectively or properly, he says, uh, the, its uncontrolled movement often produces intense physical pain. And so there are people who come to you, even in a class or in a session that you're at, and they will tell you, you know, my body is beginning to hurt, you know, on my back it's hurting, or somewhere on the spine it's hurting. Now the problem here is when there is pain within the physical body, it mentions, uh, I think a little later, that it's got to do with the etheric body that's being, that is dirty. And so if the body is dirty, it's going to make it even worse for you as a Kundalini awakens. And so the reason why for us, we need to have on a regular basis, we need to have uh, purification done on the physical level. Yes, that is physical exercises, breathing level, which is both for the physical body and definitely the energy body. And then we have something else there called uh, working on the virtues. Yes. So it's not just the physical practice of doing a lot of exercises, whether it's yoga, whether it's running, whatever it is that you like, or the breathing exercises that you learn but very important to also start to purify your emotions and thoughts through the virtues. <clears throat> so that, that purification is very crucial in awakening the Kundalini. Yes, and so when you work on building your virtues, when you overcome your limitations and weaknesses, and when you exercise regularly and do your breathing, the channels that are within your body, the nadis or the meridians that are within your body in the Sanskrit and the Chinese uh, sense, <clears throat> will then be clean enough for this kundalini energy to move, right? Because if it is not, then the energy that comes, remember it's with a lot of force, it has to go somewhere. And so if there is no passage that is opened, right? So say, say for example, it's supposed to be like a tube and the tube goes all the way up. If the kundalini is awakened, right? The pressure, it'll just go up. That's how it would. But if there are a lot of hindrances, blocks, uh, um, and lack of purity within this channel, then it cannot go up. So then it's going to burst wherever it can. You know, it's like a volcano, which does not have an outlet upwards. It's going to then just try and go sideways, uh, any which way that it can. And that is a problem for us. Yes. And so, um, I'm sorry about it today. I don't know the Wi-Fi here shows me hundred uh, percent. So I'm not sure what's happening suddenly in between today. Maybe too much of Kundalini. Okay, so uh, moving on, and so it says, uh, some of the dangers connected here, they talk about only the physical body, right? And so they say that here, there is physical pain, yes, and then they also say, uh, that the tissues can tear. And the last thing is destroy physical life. It can also destroy physical life. And that's the danger that the occults Sorry, this is the first time this is happening to us and not too sure why. Apologize <laughs> to everybody who's there. I'm not sure what's going on today. It's, this is my first time that I'm going through this. This session will be available as recording, but... Uh... But I'm hoping the recording is better than <laughs> what you're hearing. Yeah, okay. So let's just go. Uh, it says our bandwidth is low, is it? No, it'll be fine now. It should, be, it should recover. Okay, continue. Yes. I uh, wanted to finish the chapter today. But shall I, I go down and turn off the... No. Okay. All right. So uh, to move on, so you, you're basically talking about uh, the impurities that cause problems in the body and the worst thing being um, loss of life, physical life. However, they also say, interestingly out here, which they don't mention, uh, they say uh, it may also do permanent injury to vehicles on the other higher levels. Yes, not just the physical. And so that's why in, in Arhatic Yoga, Masachar talks about the syndromes, the various syndromes that not only affect just the physical body. And what I like about Masachar is that not only does he tell you, yes, these are the symptoms that you will have if you have a problem on the physical level, on the emotional level, on the mental level, Yes, uh, when certain faculties open up. Remember, we were talking about how when you awaken the Kundalini, the physical body is suddenly aware. And so suddenly you become clairaudient or clair clairvoyant and you suddenly see or hear things or you can smell things. And that sudden awakening can be quite uh, scary for many, mm -hmm. right? And so when these things do happen, he not only tells you why it's happening, 
they, these are some of the symptoms, but he tell you why these are happening and also gives you solutions so you can take care of it, which no one, as far as I know, with all the books and all the other teachers that we've heard of, have given to their students so easily and so freely. He's the one who coined the term Kundalini syndrome. Before that, before I think 88, that term did not exist. There was no word as Kundalini syndrome. People just suffered. <laughs> so so he, I think he is the one who made up that term, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, yeah. So that's what uh, they say when the Acharya say, it's Master Cho who coined that word. And so to move on, um, they say that when it prematurely does uh, rush up, yeah, it awakens and goes up. Now, this is not done by someone intentionally. They say that uh, when it goes up, sorry, if it if it is prematurely awakened, which means that they've intentionally awakened the Kundalini, and as it goes, uh, it starts to rush instead of upwards, downwards. And so instead of going up, it goes downwards. And remember the chakras that are there. One is the sex chakra, one is the basic chakra. And so the sex chakra suddenly gets this huge gush of energy. And if you don't know what to do with it, it kind of overwhelms you to such an extent that you have to act upon it. And people go crazy because they have to satisfy this need. If it's not say, uh, satisfied, it causes a problem for the person. Yes. And so you become like a slave to this. And so uh, I think they, they talk about it as the uh, thraldom, which is basically full of basic um, lower needs that need to be gratified, especially with reference to sex. And so they say such men become uh, satyrs. Yes. And these are also beings that are connected with lust and drinking. Uh, gods, uh, especially in, in both the Roman and the Greek mythology as well. And so the monst they become like monsters. And they say that you can't overcome this weakness that you have in one incarnation. That's how strong and powerful the Kundalini is, that this energy goes into the chakra and kind of overtakes your life. Because probably the thought form generated, um, you know, the seeds that are formed during that time will pass through. Uh, incarnations. Correct. And I think um, if you come from a very orthodox, traditional background, uh, the aspect of energy in the sex chakra, or even sex for that matter, even physically, is not spoken about. It's considered uh, ugly, dirty. And so the thoughts that the child, even as a kid, gets, uh, be it male or female, is all lodged within the person. And so if it does get activated, and these are the energies that the person has, then can you imagine what happens, right? First of all, there's, there's this, this uh, unleash of extremely powerful energy and these thoughts get magnified and then you have no control over it. And taking control over it, they say you, you are very lucky if you can meet someone who knows how to help you treat it. And many people don't know what to do. And we've had people from other schools who have come for healing into our school because they do not know what to do with it, right? Um, keeping that aside, it is very important for us to realize that this weakness can last more than one incarnation. And so when we do a purification, sometimes people say, why should I do this? Because, you know, I don't have this now. But you never know the latent seeds might still be there. And so you want to pull it out of your system and do whatever is necessary to see to it that your energy centers are normal. And so they say sometimes... Um, now, just go through this really quickly. They uh, attain this supernormal power and they're able to use subhuman beings, yes, to do certain things. And they say um, it is not an area we should actually explore because we don't have any business actually as a human race to work with this um, subhuman race. However, black magicians do use it and also use these lower energies to gratify themselves. So if you hear of old stories of the tantrics, Yes, and uh, many of them being very learned men. So using intelligence, yes, using the, the uh, knowledge that they have along with this lower need, the lower desire is not a very good combination. And, and that did last for a very, very long time in different parts of, uh, for example, in India from what I know. Yes, and so um, it continues to say that uh, these lower four centers, which we are referring to, are usually not uh, are left aside by white magicians and people who follow the good law, right? So they don't usually go there. All right. Of course. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Before the Kundalini is aroused, it's absolutely essential. I'm moving here. Um, of more purity. Okay. Now, also that the will is strong enough to control the force. Because you have to understand, uh, if you're pulling the energy up, there, there were these old techniques. They, they do it either with the three locks of pulling it up, you know, the triple lock. Uh, I think what I'm supposed to say, I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, anyway, they use the three locks to pull up the energy, so it requires will, you know, the three bandhas. They perform the root lock, um, the three locks, the throat lock, and then they pull the energy up. Now, it requires will, and then there are other ways that require the will. But in our technique, we don't really require too much will. We just require a little bit of intention which is a milder form of will, but it's not, too much, uh, it, it's not too much because we have the divine energy which controls the Kundalini energy, okay? So we'll talk about that maybe later. And um, it's uncontrolled movement often produces intense physical pain. That happens especially if the body's not ready. Uh, if you don't have sufficient physical purification, the chakras, the nadis, the energy channels are dirty. So you feel pain because one time Master Ju was watching, he's like, oh, the energy is burning the etheric tubes. <laughs> so it's like, you know, when a wire is not pure enough and you try and put current or high voltage of electricity through it, it starts to burn or you're connecting too many things into the socket. It starts to have this burning effect. So the same thing happens, but to your etheric body <laughs> or to your etheric channels. Uh, it, it, it's not funny, but uh, with, proper, with proper knowledge, you can avoid that very easily. And when they say uh, the vehicles higher than the physical, they basically... Um, talking about uh, psychological, um, you know, psychological issues. So the emotional body gets affected, the mental body gets affected. Most of you are Arhatic yogis, you have good experience with this. <laughs> okay. Uh, but of course, there are solutions. All right. Um, you see, it, to, as much as you prepare, when there is tremendous amount of growth, there will be certain amount of pain. Uh, you know, it's like how, uh, when the, you see, you have to understand, if you want to grow very, very fast in a very, very limited amount of time, what was supposed to take millions of years, I'm not even kidding, let's say hundreds and thousands. Sometimes we don't want to say millions because to the human brain, that's almost, how do you work one million years in, in 50 years? How can you do that? Or 30 years? How can you do that? It's the technology, okay? Before to uh, go from, um, from India to where? Europe. You have to go all the way through the Silk Route through bandits and everything and reach there at that time if you told someone no problem you can actually have a technology and you can just fly there in one hour <laughs> the person will be like you're crazy you have to understand the it's human brain impossible. yeah the human brain cannot comprehend so if you say okay i'm writing a letter to my friend ah oh, write a letter okay i have to physically write it i have to get a postcard I have to put that i have to send it it has to go here 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 might take one to three months then you say Oh, I just send a, a, a message and the letter reaches immediately. Uh, it is a matter of technology. It is not a matter of, um, you see, the brain, uh, are, we, are, we are basing things based on our current understanding. But it's a, it's a, it's a base, it's, it's a matter of understanding technology. Why was I talking about this? I wasn't here. I forgot. Sorry. Yeah. And there was too but much no movement going on, so I forgot. Yeah, I know. Time. I've changed that. That's what I was trying to tell you. Uh, but now I forgot what I was trying to say. Yes. So whenever you're trying to reduce that time from hundreds and thousands of years, because you have to understand, if you want to become a Paramahamsa, an Arhat, you want to manifest the light, love, and power within you, you have to have the vehicles to do that. And in order for the vehicles to upgrade so fast, in such a short amount of time, there will be something like some, some small issues which can be easily rectified, all right? Um, if you take proper precautions. And even if you get them, uh, some of them, there are solutions. Most of them, there are solutions. It's like growing pain. You know, like when the kids, their bones grow very, very fast. Uh, young age, I heard they have these growing pains and the joints start hurting, you know, when they have the growth spurt. Um, so you have to have growing pains, <laughs> all right, even psychologically or, okay. So now, what else? Uh, one common effect of arousing is that it rushes downwards into the lower centers. Okay, all this Sumi has spoken about it. It's quite impossible because you see, you have the upper chakras. Uh, if you know pranic healing, you know that these are your executives 
and these are your workers. But whoever has the most power is in control. Whoever has the most energy, all right? So if most of the Kundalini energy, which is highly activating in nature, goes into the sex chakra, and the person has a puritanical attitude. So sometimes when some yogis are meditating, they, uh, uh, it's not only about the technique, it's also about their psychological attitude. Because they're, you know, even saints sometimes, because of the upbringing, the attitude sometimes might be a little bit different. I think one of the, you know, one of the popular ones, is it Swami Muktananda? I think Swami Muktananda wrote about it. Yeah. Um, so he wrote about it. And in that story, he's like, I apologize to my mother. I apologize to my brother. You know, you have to really appreciate this uh, teacher because not many gurus write about their bloopers, <laughs> so to speak. So we have to really appreciate uh, the teacher for that. Now, this great teacher, he was practicing uh, uh, a certain form of yoga. And at some point, he started seeing all these naked women running around. All right. Uh, uh, you know, devis or devas, I don't know, I don't remember the story correctly, but the essence is he saw all these naked women and the natural reaction was like, oh, no, I'm a Swami, no. You know, he's trying to inhibit himself. And so what happened was more energy started going there because as prime killers, you know, energy follows where intention is focused. So if your sex chakra becomes big and then you think of the sex chakra, all the energy is going to go there. So you have the Kundalini going there plus your intention, which is going there more. So even though he's a Swami and the chakras are so big, at some point you are across a critical mass, a critical level. So at some point, you know, he started, he couldn't meditate. Every time he'd sit down, this would happen. He was having a hard, hard time in the true sense of the word. <laughs> so he had this Ishwari Pranadana, you know, he, he gave up, he, he just invoked to the Supreme God, said, help me. And he was shown a vision that it's, you know, sex is a creative act. So he just focused on where he wanted to go and it, it went there. Okay, this is if you know uh, Kundalini, so we won't go into it. But the point is, it's normal. It's normal. Even with very powerful teachers, it happens. Okay. And the reason why it becomes uncontrollable is because if you see the, for those of you who know psychotherapy, the Agnya is your controlling center. This center is uh, the one that's supposed to direct all the chakras. So imagine you have a factory and the director, the executives have no control on the production, nothing. There'll be chaos in the factory. There'll be no regulation. So that is why the, uh, it's very important to, uh, as we'll move ahead, the new technique is to high, activate or give power or energy to the upper chakras first so they control the awakening of the Kundalini. Okay? So the workers are controlled. <laughs> All right? And um, now it is probable that uh, they will attain certain supernormal powers even with this technique because you have to understand in the inner world, there's this teaching called like attracts like. So when you are sexually very aggressive, it's not only the sex chakra, by the way, even the navel, the basic becomes very aggressive. So you attract beings that have similar energy towards you. And so, um, and they serve um, and bring them into contact with subhuman beings to which humanity is never intended to hold any commerce or we don't want to really interact with these beings because they're like pranksters. They tell you, you know, I am this, but you know, and then you start to listen to them. Yes, I'm a great teacher also. And then you start to go crazy, <laughs> right? Um, so that is what it's saying. So it's giving you one of the warnings before you want to awaken it. So we'll just quickly go uh, into the um, presentation. So otherwise we have too much to cover. So we'll skip, oh, that's just great. Anyway, so all the Kundalini energy is located next to the space of spine, it's concerned near the base of the spine. Um, okay, we finished all of this. We finished this. Okay. Um, we finished this also. Finish this. The electricity is gone here. Yeah, the Kundalini energy. So here it talks about um, the importance of purification. All right, purification or what uh, Arthapal calls proper. I think he says preparation, right? Or something like that. Uh, the Kundalini energy tends to magnify the good and the bad qualities unless he practices character building or inner purification thoroughly and sufficiently in the early stages. You have to do it in the early stages because if you are developing very, very fast, you know, in the early stages, it's like your chakras are smaller. So as stuff comes out, it's manageable, all right? Um, but later on, it's like, say you're at a party, you have one dirty dish, you can clean it. You have two dirty dish, you can clean it. But as you progress, if you are not practice proper purification and you awaken it and use a higher technique, 
what will happen is you will have uh, maybe 50 dirty dishes coming at one time. You may or may not be able to handle that. All right. Um, now here it says when a meditator is sexually inhibited or has a negative attitude, the Kundalini sex energy, instead of going up, will get stuck in the lower chakra. So this is exactly what they're talking about. When this uh, uh, occurs, the person will experience intense sexual excitement accompanied by a dramatic change in breathing pattern. Of course, there are solutions for this. And one of the side effects of improper premature awakening of the Kundalini is excessive unregulated sex drive. A person become a okay. This is very uh, descriptive, uh, raving sex maniac. All right. Um, so it is correlating with what the book has said. Now here uh, we're looking at a person with less spiritual development with a lot of character flaws. Now this is what they're talking about: people who you don't want to interact with, right? So it talks about a person with less spiritual development with a lot of character flaws will attract doubtful beings or pranksters in the inner world, all right? By the time these pranksters are finished with the person, his or her life is in chaos, resulting in multitudes of problems. The people who receive these so-called inner transmission in the West are called mediums. You know, you see these mediums, you know, I'm a medium, I'm a channel. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them. Some do channeling, okay? So this is what they're talking about in the book uh, about, the, about the course. Now here again, it's 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 uh, here again. It's it's uh, talking about it. It says if a person has any of the following weaknesses, right? Uncontrolled anger, hatred. So these are things that you need to purify first. All right, and it's a gradual process. You can't go. Remember, I told you in spirituality, don't think off and on. Don't think black and white. Think degrees. So as long as you're working on it, you're aware of it. That's okay. But uncontrolled anger, hatred. Pride, greed, tendency to lie and steal, maliciousness, ruthlessness, violent tendency, sexual excessiveness, emotional instability. These defects will be magnified to a very, very high degree. That is why, for those of you who've done Arhatic Yoga, whenever you do Arhatic Invocation, a master would always tell us to ask for purifying light. Why? In your chakras are ancient seeds. Some are good, some are not very good. All right? You, you have these seeds. It's not there. There's influence uh, from society, but there are these natural things from the past. Like if you have, if for, for those of you who are parents, um, those of you who are you know mothers and fathers, you realize that when your children are born, uh, if you look at each child, they're not born like a blank slate. They have certain qualities already just in the first few weeks. They have a tendency to cry more. They have a tendency not to cry more. They have a they have different tendencies. You notice even in the first year, each child has not been born blank. They have come with carryover. <laughs> Okay, so you in your chakras, you have ancient seeds, good and not very good. So when you interact with people on the spiritual, uh, so when you go in the spiritual part with, with the Kundalini, the effect is activating all over. It has no consciousness in, in terms of what it activates, it activates everything. So all the seeds are activated. That is why when you interact with people on the spiritual part, you say, this is very strange. This person is on the spiritual part. How come this, they have this or that negative quality? Have you noticed that? So it includes us as well, of course, everyone. Because when the light comes down and the Kundalini is awakened, everything is fertilized. So that is why uh, when Master Chua says, when you do an invocation before your meditation or in general, always ask for purifying light every day. The word he used was purifying light. You ask, so in other words, you're asking the Supreme Being and your teachers, help please clean me of this inner garbage, these negative tendencies. Okay? Um, so that is that. What? I All spoke right. too much. It's okay. Uh, okay, so let's move on. So we're going to the next paragraph. We were talking about those who actually prematurely awaken this uh, Kundalini energy. And so it says, um, what happens with this is that all aspects in you, your nature, right? The good qualities and the not so good qualities all get this energy. And so they give you the example here. They say also lower evil qualities let's just call it bad qualities like for example you have ambition ambition is great but the thing is that ambition in your mental body kind of gets uh, awakened and grows probably in in a later time into an inordinate uh, inordained uh, sorry inordinate uh, degree to an extent where your intellectual pride starts to become stronger and stronger yes and so ambition yes is good to have it but together with that also your intellectual pride uh, goes to abnormal levels 
And so you do know people who are very, very intelligent, but very rude, very abrasive, and can literally cut you with their words. Yes, um, now that doesn't end only there. They start feeling, uh, what I've noticed in, in, in Master Chua's life, that they start to feel that they're even better than Master Chua. They start feeling that because they have this intense knowledge about the world and how everything is set in, uh, they understand the plan according to them, they start feeling that they know more than the teacher. And that's when the teacher then lets them go. Because the teacher realizes there's no, there's not going to be possible for them uh, to continue with this, uh, with, with, with him in the school. And the sad thing is, uh, when they are then let go at that point, Master Chua says, I think for 10 incarnations, they cannot... Just to clarify, the teacher doesn't let them go. Because of their pride, they disconnect themselves from the teacher automatically. Because you, if you think I know more than you, the, then automatically that's a sign that you're not going to be receptive to what the person's saying. Like if you're talking to someone, you think you know more than the person, you're not really listening to the person. So in other words, you're not receptive to the person. So you don't get energy from that person. So the student always disconnects themselves from the teacher, not the teacher disconnects themselves from the student. That's an important part. So I have to talk about it. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So um, I know in Master Cho's life, uh, there have been many of the senior people who've left, right? Uh, senior most. <laughs> yes. So one person is what... Uh, Amit was referring to, but I know of others who've actually come to him and said that they will be leaving. And then he's not going to stop them because he realizes that's what needs to be done. And so they let go. Uh, but they lose out on meeting a great teacher for several lifetimes. Yes, I think he said 10, but I, I could be completely wrong. So they have to then earn their way back to actually finding a teacher who can then continue to guide them on the spiritual path. Yeah. So these weaknesses, even in so-called very senior people on the spiritual path can be a hindrance. And that's why Master Chow would tell us, he says, pride is the last weakness to get out of you. And uh, some of the uh, sharing that were done by, uh, again, the senior disciples helped us realize what, how it could be. And so I remember for about uh, a year, nine months to 12 months, um, I did it on, on pride every day, you know, because I did not want Master Chow to be calling me and saying, Sumi, okay, fine, this is what you have to do. <laughs> So worked on it. But the thing is, it keeps coming up. It keeps kind of throwing its ugly head on and off. And you have to be on a watch. Because if you don't notice it, it can take over. It could be, here we're talking about intellectual or, or mental pride. It could be with reference to finances. It could be spiritual pride, even at home where you feel, oh, you know, see, I'm practicing all these things. I'm doing meditation on twin hearts every day. I'm uh, listening to all these amazing teachings. You don't even know how you're created, blah, blah, blah. So that pride can also be a cause of concern for you. Yeah. So any form of pride, physically, you think you're better off than others, different things. So this is an example where uh, they're talking about intellectual pride. The force of the Kundalini is no ordinary force, but something resistless. Yes. And so it's going to just find its way wherever it has to go. And so if you don't purify, if you and I don't purify, let's put it all together. We are going to have issues because that weakness of ours is going to get this extra boost of powerful energy. And it's like a seed becomes a tree and then it's more difficult to get it out of your system. Yes. Uh, and if you look back in your life and you realize, oh my God, five years ago, I felt this and I didn't do anything about it. And today you're struggling with it. Some of it has been there from your childhood. Like he says, literally came on the slate you were born with, with all these things that you already have. But some come to us in between. If we can work on that, that would make a big difference. The force of the, sorry. Um, so if an un instructed man has the misfortune to arouse it yes he should at once try and find someone who can help him with this and so it says here in hatha yoga pradipikas it says it gives a liberation to yogis and bondage to fools yep and you want to continue or shall i do the next i showed one? the slide about this remember about the weaknesses you need to get rid of but what what sumi is talking about we don't want to scare you uh, but you see, the thing is, the reason it's resistless is when somebody projects energy towards you, if you're not receptive, it will not come in. But this is your inner force that's awakened. It doesn't matter whether you're <laughs> receptive or not. It awakens everything. It's like Pandora's box. All right. Now, 
there are certain things the body has a consciousness of its own so it will uh, automatically start to restrict this force okay uh, using the new technique now you have to remember that all what is mentioned here is using an old technique which automatically awakens an uncontrolled amount of force and uh, there is no uh, uh, there is no regulating factor to it you can by mistake open like four layers and like ah i shouldn't have done that <laughs> right you have to understand with regards to pride i've met people who are saying yeah i've been trying to remove my pride i think i'm almost done you're not going to be done all right you'll think you're going to be done uh one time it really hit me was when master cho and I, I i i i remember the essence and i remember his face uh one time you're just sitting there he's like even today very regularly i don't know whether he said almost every day very regularly i invoke to the divine providence or yeah to the supreme god uh for divine grace i think that's the word he used that he doesn't fall spiritually due to pride all right now we can go into talks about how that happens and how that works because the amount of power that you get especially when he got certain uh you know when he developed very fast he was a little worried that it would go to his head because you have to understand that you are just it, sometimes it feels ridiculous it's like you're part of a company right right now the energy that you have if you are uh, a director of a company for example you show that card i'm from apple ceo <laughs> with that comes tremendous power but that power is not from that individual that power is from what the company represents and who the company is connected to and the amount of um energy and value that company has similarly you are part of the divine plan you're like a director you are in you are in force with tremendous amount of power it is uh, beyond the comprehension and that is a lot of it is yours a lot of it is not yours it is basically uh, uh you're just part of the company of course when you leave the company you realize so when you do anything even if you do a different healing technique it will work because you know that's what many of the senior disciples they didn't realize they were part of they were connected to the teacher part of the divine plan so they were sort of empowered uh and since you know it's like i i work for ibm thank you very much but if you leave ibm you're not getting the perks you're not getting the benefits employee benefits uh what is that they say travel uh, benefits <laughs> you know dental insurance especially insurance very important right uh so we, we, we maybe they experiment with some other healing technique thinking they know better it worked because they were using not their energy they were using the company's funds okay yeah. right so suddenly they detach from the company they don't quit you're not getting the salary anymore <laughs> okay so you're on your own so you have to understand it's it's very scary sometimes because sometimes you know you think you know it's like when you feel like suddenly you leave your job you're like oh i don't have any power i'm just so and so person anymore i have some savings but no are close to the you know amount of energy when connected to the company so pride is very very fishy okay um so that is one there was something else also that you said that uh, that in the hindustan so there was something but anyway i think that is enough that's all i spoke about right yeah so uh, so no i i was talking about the um, intention the regulating factor yeah you see the meditation in a breath that you teach we teach you in arhatic uh, in arhatic yoga is extremely powerful and extremely safe but over a certain amount master cho is like it's not getting activated that that much because without character building uh the energy cannot be activated it's it's like a you know it's like the old ways of doing electrical circuits where everything would just explode and then the whole house is on fire comparing to the new method where you have a fuse box and you have another fuse box and then you have some fuse you know you have the in the house you have also the fuse so no big deal if there's a surge ah okay the like what happened oh just turn this on no problem so this is the difference between the 100 year old technique and today's technique all right so uh good thing we are born today <laughs> so we have but of course you see we need these techniques because we're trying to evolve in a city not in an ashram where you give up everything uh and the reason so that's why sometimes people say is the course too expensive masuchu was like you know that's when it hit me when he said are you kidding me you're part of the indian tradition you're telling me it's supposed to be free i'll give you bhajans for free but if you want to learn inner teachings you're supposed to give up everything just wear a g string and come and sit with me in the ashram there so you give up all your wealth everything 
to produce tremendous amount of good karma. He's like, I'm not asking you to leave your family. I'm not asking you to leave your work. I'm not asking you to give up anything. You have to pay a few thousand rupees and you can go to five store hotels and eat and then you can live your life and progress spiritually also. So it's a matter of perception. Okay. Um, so that is, uh, that is something. So some, because I can send some of you like, oh my God, I'm doing Kundalini Yoga. Don't worry. This is the new system. This is the old system. But it's good to learn about the old systems so you appreciate the new system. It's like, you know, you're looking at your kids today. You're like, wow, you have it really easy. <laughs> you know, you know, compared to modern technology, you know, travel by train compared to travel by plane, phone, you know, smartphone. Even in 20 years, you see the difference in technology, physical, uh, you know, electronic technology. You, you, you tell your kids, you know, you, you really don't appreciate this. You have no idea what I had to do to get a phone. I had to bribe people. <laughs> Right. So, uh, so imagine hundred years spiritual technology, big jump, okay, big jump. That's it. I think we are done for the day. I thought we'd finish the chapter, but I talked too much. Kundalini, you can go on and on for a day. So I think we should just wrap up next time. We will try and practice. We. Um, oui. I, I will. I will. I will. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll reduce the the information. All right. So we'll just go to your questions very quickly uh, before we kind of uh, wind down. Yeah. All right, you want to answer this? What is this? Does every master in pranic healing represent seven rays relating to Kundalini? If we can identify faults and virtues and said incisor, if we can uh, observe what, what uh, Rahul, I'm not understanding, can be taken over by loving energy. Ah, okay. Does Kundalini also need opposite uh, charge to the... No, 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 no. Kundalini energy is just a potential energy. That's why I was very clear in the beginning. It just activates. You cannot obsess it. The only way you can optimize it is clear its path. Yeah. <laughs> clear yeah. the way. Yeah. Clean Clarify up. Clarify yourself. There is no other way. All right. It's going to go and open up everything. Right. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the terrorizing will come out. <laughs> so it's more important for you to then purify rather than awaken the Kundalini. And remember, this is not the only way to awaken the Kundalini. Uh, if you look at great saints, they all didn't do Kundalini meditation. Right. Um, so... There are other ways in which the Kundalini also... We'll talk in the next awakened. session. Yeah. That's the only thing I'll talk about. I'll talk about the layers of awakening. Because meditation is not the only way you can awaken it. There are other ways. When you work, when you work, you awaken your Kundalini. We'll talk about it. One of the books must wrote in a baby arhat awakens. I'm not going to answer that because then I'll get... Um, I, I'm not... Okay. If you want, if it's an arhatic session, maybe. Kundalini gets stuck in the sex chakra as Shishamna and Adil years are not fully awakened. <sighs> you see. Gitanjali, uh, it's, this is still an open session. You uh, see, the okay, it says the lower evil qualities. I think she's asking because the lower evil qualities are more awakened rarely than good. One time, after, uh, a, a, I don't know what's a retreat or darshans, series of them, yeah? And this is not in the, I don't think this is in India, this is in the States, where people are, you know, anyway, different. Um, now, because uh, most people, wait, 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 wait. Um, because uh, most people would meet Master Choa, after that, we'd get a regular, uh, not complaint, but observation. People's sex drives were immensely... Uh, overactivated. Overactivated. <laughs> Let's just say, no Kundalini meditation, just interacting, darshan, this and that. So we asked Master Choa, Master Choa, uh, what is happening? <laughs> Are you doing something or what? Of course, we didn't say that. Uh, we just asked what's happening. And then he said, you see the energy of the teacher is activating also. It's like divine energy, right? And he says, but the problem is, if you have four containers of different size and, and, and you pour water into all of them, which container will get filled the most or which will get, get filled the, fill the fastest? The biggest one, right? Most people, their lower chakras are already overactivated because if you see most people, they don't know how to have, they they know how to live fun, they know how to eat, they know how to have sex, they know how to work, uh, they they know how to do these things. So the lower chakras are more activated than the upper ones. So when they come to the teacher, a lot of the times those chakras get filled more and faster. Certain people it transmutes, but for a lot of people, especially with lack of inner purification, different types of attitude, the sex chakra would become bigger because in most people, that's the bigger one. 
right? So that is why the lower ones get to, tend to get activated more compared to the upper one. That's my understanding of it. Okay, and with the, with, with, uh, the mental body is very readily aroused and grows to an inordinate degree. That's why if you look at the prerequisites for uh, before awakening Kundalini in the book, Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul, if you've not read it, I highly recommend you do. Uh, that's why he recommends that the heart uh, has to be awakened, a heart and crown has to be developed first so that even though you have the mental capacity, you practice loving kindness, you practice, you know, uh, a lot of love, you know, so that, you know, when you have love, like when you love your children, your child comes to you like, you know, I know more than you, daddy. Uh, you know, I know about this. You know, this, 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 is this. You're like, yeah, sure, sure. No problem. Yeah, that's fantastic. What else do you know? Why? Because you love them. But if somebody else comes to you, you know, I know more than you. Then you're like, ah, you know, you cut them. <laughs> Psychologically and mentally, you cut them into sushi, veggie sushi. So, um, uh, or sashimi. Uh, but um, but the, the key fact component is love. Right. So if you have a big heart, you'll say, okay, this person is excited. Let them be, <laughs> let them talk. Maybe yeah. I'll nurture them like, kid, you know, like you do with your kids. As long as they're not causing trouble. Okay. Go. We have to go. Why are you making me answer all the questions? Uh, last session I asked, okay, uh, what good solution for my sharp pain in the right side near the back heart for a long time? I have no idea. We'll have to check. And this is uh, also for the legs. Have you been practicing? Is this happen after inner breath or what? Sometimes the Ming Min is dirty. The energy will get diverted back and also this it's very normal legs. it doesn't have to do with age someone says is teenage has more probability of awakening the kundalini or the old one you have to understand that every time you have a certain activation kundalini is required by the body you know that the body goes through puberty but you do not know how the body goes under the puberty where does it get the energy to undergo puberty why those chakras those kind of things it's a combination of awakening of kundalini a combination of the physical permanent seed design because you have to understand the physical permanent seed design is not static it's dynamic because as you change the, the design i shouldn't have said that let's leave that um you answered the rest of the questions okay so uh, the burning sensation in the knees and in the foot right uh, one of the things that you could do is when you're doing healing for this patient ask them to keep their feet in salt water introduce them to the meditation of twin hearts because the meditation of twin hearts has a flushing effect that's the only meditation that has that effect and so while you're doing healing when the energy goes through even if it's kundalini energy or just blocks and also karma that's manifesting in the this person this patient's legs and knees will then get flushed out and it has to be done regularly and there will be a change in the quality of energy within that physical body which will also help you heal because if the particles, the energy particles are healthier, uh, like we know from all the class ses sessions we've been doing, right? Uh, it would make it easier for the physical body to heal itself and flush out uh, energy that is not conducive for it on a regular basis. Um, and just to answer the question, uh, teenage has more probability awakening. Not really, but uh, depending if the old person, the problem with as people grow older, remember we said, we spoke when we were talking about the chakras, that the chakras become less elastic, less dynamic. They start to become sluggish. So can the energy body handle the load or the voltage that comes with the awakening of Kundalini? That is the factor, not that they're teenage or old or whatever. Um, and there was something uh, other than that that was asked um, over here. How do you overcome the pain that comes after Kundalini meditation? Do sweeping on the affected area. That's all. And as you move forward, just sweep it 50, 60 times or ask some people to sweep it for you. It'll be fine. It'll, it'll work. Okay. Now, if it's happening to you regularly, then maybe that channel or that energy, uh, sent energy uh, nadi or meridian there is blocked. Uh, or does not have enough uh, space for energy to flow through. So clean it out before you do your meditation. Hopefully after meditation, you won't have the same side effect uh, yeah. regularly. Atma Namaste, uh, Etiraj, you said that uh, when there's an impact like excessive activation of the sex chakra, that would suffer with that for the entire Inkasha. She's not saying it, the book is saying it. <laughs> All right, just to clarify. Um, and not only the entire incarnation, future incarnations also. <laughs> All right. Uh, remember I spoke about the seeds. Uh, my understanding behind that, because I've not seen it, I have to actually see a sample case like that uh, and see them their whole life. Uh, my, uh, you see, I understand before, transportation of sex energy was not prevalent and the understanding of sex energy was not prevalent. And also, uh, number three, when you're aggressively uh, sexual, you're not only talking about 
actually having sex, you're talking about desire thought forms. Tremendous amount of strong desire thought forms that you're thinking about it all the time. Now these become like your own Frankenstein monsters that you carry with you in the inner world. So it's not about that. So if you know how to do psychotherapy, just disintegrate them before they become Frankenstein. Correct. If you haven't done pranic healing, yes, then it is a problem. So of course you can heal it, no problem. Correct. If you are a pranic healer, you know what to do. But if you're not a pranic healer, uh, preferably find a pranic psychotherapist who can help you with this condition. Yeah. And uh, with reference to, uh, what was I going to say? There are some more questions here. Uh, I believe you said that when there's an impact like excessive activity. Okay, that, that is finished. One, is it, can this we one? do one hand? Is that question? I need a call from the last session. You mentioned there's a visualization for, for releasing disturbed thoughts last week. Who mentioned it? Did I see? I didn't see it. Did I? You mentioned <laughs> about a visualizing it for releasing disturbing thoughts. I think you were talking about inner reflection. Were you talking about it? No. no. Did I talk about it? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, for the. No reflection. Oh, Sumi mentioned it. Okay. Aha! What did I mention? You mentioned about a visualization technique for releasing disturbing thoughts. Okay, uh, so that's again part of pranic psychotherapy. We call it the screen technique. And in Arhatic Yoga, we call it inner reflection firm resolution. That's probably what I mentioned, uh, which uh, is in reference to what you're talking about, visualizing technique. Yeah. Um, now, someone else asked me something else. Uh, can you do one and a half cycles of Kundalini? If you are uh, part of the Arhatic Yoga school, then you know what you should do, yeah? Hopefully you'll be doing more than that <laughs> because that is the Is it Blue Pearl and Kundalini connected? Yes. 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 <laughs> That's all we can say. Uh, the cold and warm sensation within the body, we'll come to that in the next uh, class. So if you can just wait for that. What cold better. and warm sensation? The sensation when it's moving inside the body. Wow. The awakening of the Kundalini. Uh, uh, puritanical attitude, I think uh, it is difficult, especially if you've grown up with those puritanical attitudes about sex, is to start recognizing one is if God has given us uh, this energy center and it's the center that actually procreates, allows the human race to survive, uh, creating a new human being, how can that be dirty? Yes, and the energy in that is regenerated in the sense that you've got to understand that through that energy, you can actually produce a whole baby. Even science can't do that. Science still needs part of the male and the female uh, parts of the body to be able to create that. Yes, and this energy is required even to sustain your brain, to see to it that it continues to work properly and you do not, do not have memory issues and other problems with the brain. And so this energy is regenerative. If you have uh, done pranic healing, for example, and you've tried to regenerate a particular organ um, I remember we did this with one of the sessions earlier and people say it, even a small part like a kidney or a part of a liver takes them sometimes six to 12 months to regenerate a small part and imagine the energy in the sex chakra can regenerate a whole baby, not regenerate, it can generate a whole baby. Yes. So keeping those things in mind, maybe that can help you start changing the perspective of uh, sex and the sex energy in the sex chakra. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, that's done. Uh, thank you for tolerating all the cracking and breaking <laughs> and whatever else happened in today's session. Sorry about that. It's the first time we've had this. Uh, no one's using the Wi-Fi in the house, so something obviously is going on. So let's end with a prayer. Please kindly close your eyes, connect down to your palate. Let's quickly say thank you. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokok, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Meli, to all the great teachers, masters, the beings of knowledge, light, and power, also the beings of communication, our respective Wi Fi's to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your tremendous guidance, tremendous patience with us. Continue to help us have greater clarity, deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, everybody. Atma Namaste, see you on Friday. We'll continue with Kundalini and move on to the web. What is it called? Uh, uh, um, what web? The atomic web. Atomic web. <laughs> I have to still figure out why it's called that. But anyway, Certainly. thank you. Yep. See you then. See ya. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned how to use Omani Padmayam to do self-healing, to visualize sitting in front of the sea and get healed. Yes, you can try that. Yes? You can even sit on top of it. You see how that goes because, you know, you can float. It's the inner you know, It's visualizing. So you can float There's on no the gravity sea. there. So. Um, so today is Wednesday, right? 
Oh, Nabil, oh sorry, my, I'm oh, sorry. She's no, already no. on the end of the week. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, no I, class on Wednesday. Why, why, why? No, 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 I made a mistake. I made a mistake, Banumati. Yes, we'll meet you on Wednesday and then on Friday. Yeah, 6.30 again. Thank you, Wednesday yeah. and Friday. Bye. Bye.